Hey everyone, so I know I have been gone forever, like more than a month probably, and I am deeply sorry. I have just fallen out of the habit of posting, I suppose. Um, I wasn't going through a super easy time lately, but things have gotten better. And I want to keep going with this channel. It really has um, become something I thought it never would. Y'all really seem to enjoy many of the videos, and I want to keep making them. So, here I am. I'm back. And I will try to continue posting regularly, or at least semi-regularly, on Tuesdays and on Saturdays as I have been doing. I can't guarantee it'll be a weekly thing, but as I said, I have really enjoyed doing this and I want to get back into doing it. Um, so yeah, I'm back and I hope y'all enjoy this missing persons case that I'm about to cover, and hopefully there will be more strange, disturbing, creepy, and all that good stuff videos in the future. So yeah, happy summer and please enjoy the video. Thank you guys. Twenty-one summers ago, in May 2000, New York-based travel writers Claudia Kershock and Tanya Grossinger, who worked for Frommer's Travel Guides, wound up stranded in Negril, Jamaica. They had been meant to go on a business trip to a new sandals resort in Havana, Cuba, but it had been suddenly canceled by the sandals chain due to unrest in that country. They had arrived in Jamaica on May 24th and could not return to New York because flights were booked through June 1st. Claudia and Tanya were sent by their company to the Sandals Resort in Negril on May 25th. Although the 29-year-old Claudia was upset about the unfortunate circumstances, she decided to make the best of being stranded. She made friends with a bartender at the Negril Resort, Anthony Grant, who reportedly offered to take her out to a club to dance to reggae music, which was her favorite. They went out, smoked marijuana together, and went skinny dipping, which Claudia related to Tanya the next day, May 26. The next day, on May 27th, Tanya managed to procure a flight to New York for later that day. She called Claudia at 8 a.m. and met with her at the resort to have breakfast. Then they said their goodbyes and planned to meet up in New York once Claudia returned. Claudia told Tanya that she wanted to stay in Negril for two more days, then go to Montego Bay and Kingston to look for rare reggae albums. That afternoon, after Tanya had left for New York, Claudia was seen by a lifeguard, walking along the beach in a colorful bikini and t-shirt. She was walking away from the Negril Resort. She was carrying with her a portable radio, a notepad, her sunglasses, and her resort room key. This would be the last time anyone ever saw her. Claudia's parents, Fred and Marianne, began to feel anxious when Claudia failed to report to work in New York on June 2nd. They contacted the resort and found out that hotel maids had reported Claudia missing after noticing that she hadn't slept in her hotel bed for several days. Fred and Marianne flew to Jamaica in search of their daughter, but kept hitting one dead end after the next. Security staff at the hotel opened Claudia's room and found everything in order. All of Claudia's clothes, except the bathing suit she'd had on at the beach, were neatly packed away in her suitcase. In the hotel safe where she'd left them sat Claudia's passport, credit cards, cell phone, and $180 in cash. These belongings were removed, and the room was rented out to new guests effectively contaminating the possible crime scene and destroying any possible forensic evidence that could point to Claudia's whereabouts. 
To make things worse, her cell phone later went missing, as did the logbook that recorded the license plate numbers of every vehicle that came in and out of the resort. On top of this, video surveillance footage had been taped over, leaving an utter lack of clues as to what could have happened to Claudia. With no strong evidence of foul play, Jamaican authorities began exploring the possibility that Claudia had drowned. After all, she was last seen on the beach and nothing had been missing from her room except her bathing suit. However, Denver Freighter, a detective for the Jamaica Constabulary Force, didn't put much stock in this theory, stating, It's not impossible, but I wouldn't say it's highly likely. That area... It's not deep, and the current is not very strong, and if something should go wrong with someone there, the body would be found easily. News of Claudia's disappearance spread throughout Jamaica. Several Negro residents reported seeing a woman who matched her description, roaming the hills with a Rastafarian man. A rumor began to spread that she had run away with a Jamaican lover. However, Claudia's parents disagreed with this notion strongly arguing that Claudia loved her life, her friends, her family, and her new job and apartment. Everything was going right for her, Fred Kershock said, and there was nothing to escape. All in all, the Jamaican police received over 400 tips, but none of them led anywhere. Claudia's parents eventually became frustrated with the Jamaican authorities' utter lack of progress, and turned to the FBI and an American search and rescue team. A search dog was employed, who tracked Claudia's scent to the home of Anthony Grant, the bartender that Claudia had befriended at the resort. At Grant's home, the dog found Claudia's scent on a pair of boots, a pair of gloves, and a knife. The dog also seemed to hit on Claudia's scent in the back seat and trunk of Grant's car. The items that bore Claudia's scent were sent to an FBI forensic laboratory in the United States and were checked for signs of human blood, but nothing was found. Anthony Grant is not considered a suspect in Claudia's disappearance despite his association with her. The Jamaican authorities interviewed him for several weeks and subjected him to a polygraph test, but the results were inconclusive. 21 years later, Claudia Kershock remains missing. Her family has offered a $50,000 reward to anyone who can provide information that will solve the case. Claudia was declared legally dead in 2002, with a judge ruling it was unlikely she vanished on her own accord. So if this is the case, what happened to her? Sadly, we likely will never know. Was she murdered? Kidnapped? Did Anthony Grant really have something to do with it? Was the resort disposing of evidence as to save their reputation? If you know anything relating to the disappearance of Claudia Kershock, please consider submitting a tip to Unsolved Mysteries, who have covered the case. Thank you guys. My apologies again for the extended delays on the videos. I promise to be back soon. Until then, remember to stay spooky and to not get scared out of sorts.